Good morning. All right, so I'm in the middle of a meeting and I'm gonna try and keep this short today. So I think I'm probably actually gonna take on about half as much as I thought I was going to be taking on. So that said though, we're in Matthew chapter five, the Sermon on the Mount. It is a section of text that I will remind you every single day. It's not a sermon with rules that we're supposed to follow. It's not a sermon of expectations of which Jesus even thinks you are capable of doing. But it is the word of God. It is perfect. There's nothing wrong with these expectations. There is nothing wrong with the bar that God has set. And if we can't reach it, it's because we are fallen, sinful man. And we just need to continue asking God for forgiveness as we fail to uphold his perfect law. It's, yeah, so... Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 and 8. You have been heard it's been told to those of old you shall not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Now, here are some things about this phrasing and saying, right? You've heard it's been said you can't commit adultery. Now, that would be taking it in the very literal sense of, you know, you should not have sexual relations with someone who is married. Adultery is adultery. Fornication is different. Both are sin. Fornication, which is you know listed in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and other places, th that's sexual relations outside of marriage. So adultery has to be married and unmarried, right? Versus fornication, it, it can be two unmarried people. And... Yeah, it's, I would say a good rule of thumb is, you know, it's those kinds of things that, you know, you wouldn't want your daughter doing. Um, and sadly, the world's so fallen, some guys probably don't even care. But here's the catch. Jesus is now trying to get to the heart of the issue. And for us to understand what God's view of things is. Really how high the standard of sexual morality God has you see, adultery is not just, well, this is where Jesus, again, he's raising the bar beyond like the literal, this is adultery. It's sexual relations with anyone who's not your spouse. If they're not your spouse, it's adultery. Well, what do you mean by sexual relations? Well, Jesus says, even thinking about sexual things, with someone who's not your spouse. That's sexual immorality. It is adultery in your heart. In my heart. Yeah, what, he, what he's saying is that it just shows you have an adulterous heart. That your heart, which Jeremiah says is wicked and deceitful above all things, who can know it, right? Your heart longs for adultery. Your heart longs to sin. And that's true about many and most people. Now, yeah, there's some people who maybe don't struggle with this. And that's okay. That's good. That's really good. That's praise God, right? I just know most teenage boys aren't one of them. Or adult boys. You know, grown-up boys. The world's full of them these days. And I'm not one of them. I mean, I'm, I'm not prone to just not find attractive women attractive. I'm just, you know, I'm being honest, right? I mean, it's just like, yeah, I mean, and it's a, it's a willful choice and decision to not let my mind wander in ways that it shouldn't. And if it does, I don't need to go tell anyone else necessarily. I mean, if I'm just, my mind thinks a thought, it shouldn't have thought it. But I, I, I can confess it to the Lord and I repent and I acknowledge it. That is wrong because God's word says so. Just like the anger we talked about yesterday. You could think an angry thought towards a brother and that's sin. And you don't even have to tell the brother you had the angry thought toward necessarily. I mean, there might be times where you might want to confess to them, but you don't have to go tell them. I really don't advise telling people you thought lustful thoughts about them. It probably wouldn't go well and it's not healthy. It's gonna be weird. 
but you can confess those things to the Lord, whether it's anger or lust. Lord, I know that your word says that this sex drive I have is designed for one, one person only. It's my bride or your husband. And anything outside of that, that's my adulterous heart crying out. My flesh. The Bible says it, the Bible says it lusts against the spirit. What do you mean? Well, the spirit's telling me, you know this stuff is wrong, but the flesh, ah, I want something. And so I'm just trying to clarify today. We'll, we'll get into some of Jesus' comments on Monday, but it's adultery. This means pornography. That's just, that's duh, right? But allowing those thoughts into your mind to think and entertain the thoughts. You know, there's the, there's the old saying, it's not the first look that's sin. It's the second look. I'm sure you've probably heard that. Um, problem though is that it, that's wrong. Yeah, it's actually wrong. So you see, if I'm driving down the road and there is an attractive jogger to my right, okay? The first look is sin. And the second look is sin. But the first look is perhaps you might call a trespass. A little more than a trespass. The second look is a transgression. See, we use sin, it's, it's an umbrella term. But there are more specific words in the Bible. There's iniquity and there's transgression and there's trespass and there's all these words. And they have different meanings. And if you want to get technical, they're both sin. Let me explain why. As I drive past that jogger and I, and I look, the first look, which some people, the first look's not sin. No, it is sin. You know why? Because I also pass the fire hydrant. And I pass um, a, a 2001 Honda Accord. And I passed um, a tree. I didn't look at any of those. I didn't actually turn my head to look even one time. Why didn't I look at those? Because my sinful, lustful heart has no interest in them. So the reason I look the first time is because there's sin in there that wants to be satisfied. That's a trespass. Trespass is any time you cross the line. And, I, and looking at, why did I look? Because she's attractive. And so I, you know, she caught my eye. Because my flesh cries out for sin, just like a good smell catches your nose. There's nothing sinful about the good smell, but that's the idea, is that my, my flesh is drawn to this sinful attraction. Now, the second look, that's a transgression. You can unknowingly, unconsciously trespass. We know trespassing, you cross a line. I can cross God's line not even knowing it. Totally oblivious, I offend a brother. And I didn't mean it. It was unintentional. That's why if you read Leviticus, one of those really riveting books, and, oh, it's important to know Leviticus because there's all these sin sacrifices for unintentional sin. That's what it's titled in your Bible. We can sin unintentionally. It's sin the first look, but it's the second look where it's a transgression. I am now choosing willingly to go back and do what I know I shouldn't do. That's the difference between the first look and the second look. You see, Jesus is showing us that this lust you have in your heart, that's the root of the problem. And if you don't keep it in check, it will manifest itself in the second look. It'll manifest itself in entertaining those thoughts. It'll manifest itself in pornography and pornography is just a cheap um, release for the men who aren't man enough just to go out and commit adultery. And it sounds weird to put it, but that's all it is. You're committing adultery. You just don't have the balls to go out and actually do it with a person. <gasps> that's the thing. The evil day, it's when temptation and opportunity meet. Many people are playing with their temptation and when you do that, you are setting yourself up for the day opportunity presents itself.
because maybe when the opportunity for a real person shows up, you will have no strength because all you've ever done is caved to the lesser temptations. So church, to look with lust is sin. It's because you have a sinful heart. You're not going to hell because you have a sinful heart because Jesus paid for your sins. And you can commit adultery and you're not going to go to hell. You might lose your family and maybe rightfully so. And you commit such a grievous sin against a man or a woman. But if we play it down, we rationalize it. We set ourselves up for failure. We set ourselves up for danger. And so the first look is actually sin. It's the sin manifesting itself, making you want to look. Because I didn't look at the tree. I didn't look at the Honda Accord. But the jogger, she, she caught my eye because I have a sinful heart. And, I, and you can repent of that. You're not, oh, it's okay, I didn't look two times. No, like, that sounds, that's, doesn't, just look the way I said that. And people say it that way. It doesn't sound right. But Lord, I, you know what? I'm Lord, man, help me keep my eyes and just protect me and shield me and even take away those sinful desires so that I don't even have the temptation to look the first time. So there we go. I took longer than I intended. But I kept it shorter than usual. So Jesus, Sermon on the Mount, he's raising the bar. But when Christians begin to raise the bar, we begin to see a powerful church. Adrian Rogers said, the church pure is the church powerful. And how desperately do we need a powerful church today? All right, I'll be back to my meeting. God bless you guys. I'll see you around.